guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're talking about classic bags that have the worst resale value. Now, generally speaking, I'm talking about um, bags that the fashion houses tend to recreate over the course of many years, hence the classics. And that does include in classic and regular normal colors. Now, the purpose of this video is not to say that these are not good bags to buy. Um, some of them may or may not be some of my favorites and that's really not the point. Um, but I do work in the resale industry and part of my job is to actually appraise handbags and assess a dollar value to them. I guess the information in this video could be used to determine if you do love any of these bags, whether or not it's best for you to buy them on the pre-loved market instead. Because if you do decide to sell it, then you may still be able to sell it for the price that you purchased it for. However, if you do go out and limb if you do take the risk take the plunge and buy them at full retail you may be disappointed when if and when you do decide to sell it later on which is why i'm a huge advocate for the pre-love market hopefully this video is helpful to you comment down below what is the bag in your collection that you have taken the most loss on i'm very very curious to know mine personally um hmm, what have i taken a loss on so Number one, the first bag that you should, if you like it, you should buy it pre-loved, is the Chanel Boy. So the Chanel Boy comes in, I believe, three or four sizes. They also make a wallet on chain variety. So this bag ranges in price from 4,500 currently uh, in the small size, and then it goes to 4,900 for the medium size, and then the larger size go for uh, go for. 5400 so that's five thousand four hundred dollars is the top price that you'll expect to pay for the largest size of the boy bag unfortunately these prices do not hold for the resale market so this in my opinion is due to many is due to a couple of different factors um but i will say that it is a bit trendier and i don't view it in my eyes as necessarily as classic. The other thing that you really have to take under consideration is that the, le the leather on this bag is a bit softer. This bag is designed to appear like it's going to be structured. However, um, once you load it up with items, the structure, and, if, and especially if it's not maintained properly, the structure doesn't hold very well. Now, it's known to sag in the middle and um, in the bottom as well. I've seen it in the past uh, if it's not cared for properly and if it's overloaded and also worn crossbody too often um, you can actually get a dent in the top of this bag so in my opinion if, if you are going to go for this bag I would try to find it in the most durable leather possible there's also the clasp on the outside of this bag you will tend to find nail marks and nail marks just from um, scratching it when trying to get it open and then as well um, I wish I had one here to show you but unfortunately I don't um, but as well when you do go to close the bag a lot of the time people will end up sort of like pushing it together and over time that's how you get a lot of the squishing in the boy bag now all of those are only condition notes um, on why this bag doesn't tend to hold its value just because and generally speaking if it's not cared for immaculately uh, the condition tends to go that is reason number one why this bag does not tend to hold its value now, you guys may know I'm not a particular fan of the style of this bag but I do think that it is pretty represented um i think that most people at this point who have this bag already have this bag and in my experience it is really really tough to sell the chanel boy bag very much more than three thousand dollars right my personal favorite size of this bag is the large size um the reason for that is because in the smaller sizes of this bag you sort of have the look and feel of a big bulky boxy bag without the ability to hold anything inside of it um, so it's like deceptively large if that makes sense so in my eyes if you're going to be carrying a, bul a bulkier and larger looking bag you might as well be have the ability to carry things inside of it which is why I personally prefer the large I will tell you that I am among a very small minority of people who prefer the boy bag in the large size if Resale value is something that's important to you when buying the Chanel Boy. I would opt for the small size, possibly the medium size, but I would not go for the large. That's the size that I like, but you know, I am also, also bear in mind, I'm 
I'm not a particularly big fan of this bag to begin with. So it has been my experience that it is very difficult to sell this bag over $3,000. And if you have spent, let's say on the lowest end, $4,500, Ideally, you would want to be able to sell it for 4000 and I just generally speaking don't see that as a reality for that bag in any size and especially if you were to get the largest size at $5,400, it still holds that you, it's really tough to sell them for much more than three, unfortunately. So the next classic bag that doesn't hold its value is the Dior Lady Dior. I'm talking about the medium size. Uh, the medium size retails for $4,500 thereabout. Um, again, everything will be linked. All the information I have will be linked down below in the description box as well as some pre-loved options. The Dior Lady Dior in the medium size is a bag that they have been making since, I wanna say 1994. Um, any bag that has been re-released for 20, 25, 30 years, there's going to be a lot of them on the market. So that's definitely something to take into account. Um, if you are going for something that classic, then in my eyes, it's better to go for vintage and because you can generally save a lot of money. It is worth noting that the mini size of this bag is about a thousand dollars less in price. That's not something I'm generally used to seeing from designers. Again, it's been my experience that the difference in price between sizes of a bag will usually be like not much more than $200. If you look at brands like Louis Vuitton, their price differences are like $20 different. So that way um, you sort of get people who are deciding which bag they want based on their needs versus deciding which bag they want based on the price. So to find the mini size at about $3,500, um, so $1,000 less than the medium, I think it's a much better buy at that price. Um, those tend to retain their value a little bit better generally um, because it is a newer size, but just know that if you are going for the classic size that has been made since 1994, there's going to be a competition of a ton on the market that are older and that's going to mean that the price is gonna, going to be less. So if you really like the Lady Dior in the medium size, I would definitely consider going pre-loved. Unless you want the mini, then I think it might be worth it to get it retail if you can find a color combination that you like. So yeah. The next bag, that if you wanna buy it, buy it on the resale market. The Louis Vuitton Keep All Bandolier. And this is important, in monogram in monogram, or even Damier Ben, even Damier Ben. Now, I just wanna let you know that they make this, this bag in a variety of different canvases. I wanna say it's maybe four or five of them. Just know, all of these colors are the same price, and that's the important part. If you wanna get it in the monogram, I would get it pre-loved. However, I do recommend, if you wanna buy this bag, to buy it in the monogram Eclipse or the Damier Graffiti. First of all, the treated leather is black. Um, it's a lot easier to match. It's a little bit of like a newer style and it's not going to show wear in the same way that anything with Vachetta trim will. And these are newer, therefore you will not see a ton of them on the resale market. So the 45 centimeter retails at $1,800 and for every five centimeter, five centimeter size difference, it goes up by $20. The 45 I've heard people say is a bit too small. You guys know how I feel personally about duffel bags. I'm not a fan, I just don't wanna carry them. <laughs> but if you are looking for this bag in the monogram canvas, then you then it would not be far off to, like it is definitely possible to find these in varying levels of wear for around $500 if you're lucky. If you wanna find one that's, if that's in a lot better condition, then you could expect to pay anywhere from $700 to $1,000. Um, and I think that if you're looking for the Damier Graffiti, for example, um, you may be able to find it more around the $1,400 range. And that's up to you if you want to save the, save the money. It's about a $400 difference between buy, buying new versus buying pre-loved. That's a decision that you can make for yourself. Um, but if you're going for monogram, go vintage. Since we're talking about Louis Vuitton, we're going to now talk about their leather bags. Now, they have made a strong push towards leather within the last couple of years, and on the resale market, unfortunately, it has not really taken off very well. The prices are much, much higher. Um, you can see that the prices of the leather Louis Vuitton bags is now rivaling that of Chanel, and 
it's been my experience that anyone wanting to pay that price would rather go and get them in the store. The other thing is that since they are um, pushing for leather more, leather, the, the leather bags in you know any variety of colors is a lot more readily available in store. And with resale, especially with newer pieces, it's all about scarcity. Um, if I know I can just walk in to the Louis Vuitton store in any town USA and find a Pochette Matisse, anything in like black emprunt leather and it's readily available i'll be able to box it up and take it home today it's not going to drive the same demand as if, as something that is has been discontinued and it has been my experience that on the resale market at least the consumers are not responding to leather in the same way so it is very easy to find as well um louis vuitton leather pieces on the resale market however there are not as many people that are looking for them so if you're looking at the emprunt leather some of the other leathers then i would definitely turn to the resale market um for example the city steamer which is a beautiful bag you know um it's not really my style but it sort of looks like a taller version of the birkin that's maybe a little bit easier to get into it's really really difficult to sell these unfortunately they can retail anywhere from I guess four to five thousand dollars depending on which size you get and there's a variety of different colors but on the resale market there is not a ton of demand so you can get great steals on really recent and almost current pieces um, if you're looking for Louis Vuitton leather I would always check the pre-love market first if you're looking for this bag or any of these bags um, and if there's something that you just really have to have and you have a great relationship with your with your sales associate then I guess go for it but just Make sure you love it because if you do go to sell it, you may be disappointed in the resale price that you end up getting for it, unfortunately. So now this next bag might become a little bit controversial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. There are no wrong answers, but I am going to say the Birkin 35 centimeter. The problem with the Birkin 35 centimeter, at least in 2019, I know it's ever elusive. You can't just walk into the store and buy one, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I understand that. Yes. However, it has been the one, the standard size for, I don't know what, let's close to 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Um, I believe the first Bir the Birkin was created in 1981. Again, like I said about the Lady Dior, it has sort of flooded the market. And we're at a point now where people are downsizing their handbags, generally speaking. Again, I'm a weirdo. I'm an outlier. I love my big bags, but I'm alone in that. <laughs> Me and my big bags are on an island unto ourselves. Generally speaking, what the resale market is doing, they are all collectively downsizing in their handbags. So while... So what's happening right now is everyone is selling the Birkin 35 in order to fund the purchase of a Birkin 30 or the ever elusive 25. Now, when we get a 35 centimeter in, um, yes, it's beautiful. Again, I love big bags, so that's the size that I prefer. Um, I think the dimensions on the smaller ones kind of look a little weird personally, but uh, the demand right now is for the 30 centimeter and the 25. Uh, so what's happening right now is the market is being flooded with the 35 centimeter. If you want to get a 35 centimeter I Birkin. That I was having a little bit of camera trouble, but what I did want to make sure and show you guys, because I was trying to make a larger point with uh, the resale market as a whole and as well with the Birkin 35. So what I'm first going to show you right now is the Birkins available on Fashion Files website at the moment and this is only Fashion File obviously you can buy a Birkin from many many different places so as you can see there are a variety of Birkins some of them are more loudly colored some of them are pretty neutral like this black one here in uh, Clemence leather with uh, palladium hardware as well as this Etain um, but what I do want you to see is that there are a lot of 35s available in the market. So first, let me take you over here to the low to high sorting. And you're going to first see the shoulder Birkin, which was one that did not do very well at all. Like to get an Hermes Birkin bag for $35.95, it's pretty impressive if that's what you're in the market for. Um, but you can get a black 35 with gold hardware as low as 59.50. 
So I'm just going to scroll down here and show you what some of the numbers are. Most of these you're going to see here are the 35 centimeter and the 40 centimeter because that is a less popular size. But the general point I was trying to make in that part of the video is that the market of people who are willing to spend more than $6,000 on a pre-owned handbag on the resale market is very, very small. And I would say that the majority of those people have now moved on to the smaller size of the Birkin. So that is going to mean that the 30, the Birkin, while ever elusive and while very, very hard to come by, um, the people who are actually willing to put down the money for it have, have now moved on to the smaller size, which is why the 35 centimeter is not a great one to sell at this time. Now, no one knows what the future holds and that may change, but as you can see here, it is not that difficult to find a relatively decent condition Birkin in a variety of colors, a variety of different hardwares, and in a variety of different conditions for under $10,000. So if you think that you're going to sell your 35 Birkin under these current selling conditions and get $10,000 back, that is very unlikely to be the case. And what that is to say is that once again, as this channel believes, handbags are not reliable financial investments. I didn't get to say that <laughs> in the filmed part of this video, but you guys know that that is my stance on that, and I do not believe that to be the case. Now, if you want to go back up to the top of the screen and look at the high to low end, you'll see a couple of crocodile. This one right here is to die for, oh my god. But there, you see the 25 is going almost double the retail value here, and I'm not sure what size that one is, it's probably a 25 as well. 20,000, 20,000, and down from there. So now I'm going to look for a 35 at the highest price that Fashion File has available now, and that's for 17,500. And I want to say that the current US retail price is about 14,000. This one is probably in brand new condition. I don't know what brought this one up so much higher. Than all the rest but there's got to be something to it so the next 35 that we'll get to is this one here going for 16 5,000 and just know that if someone is willing to spend this amount 16 16,500 they can get a 30 for the same price and since this is the more popular size, this is likely the one that someone would choose. And the other thing, of course, this is definitely like a lower tiered reason as to why this bag isn't, isn't holding its value. Um, but the lack of shoulder strap is a problem for a lot of people. Um, a bag that size can, does tend to get very, very heavy. And you kind of want to have a shoulder strap when that becomes the case, which is why I do see an argument for the smaller sizes of the bag. But I just don't like them that much my personal opinion. I don't know. But then again, no one's out here spending five figures on Hermes bags and getting on wait lists because they're looking for something practical. So, eh. I thought, I thought I'd throw that point in there, but it's, that's not really important. <laughs> so, I hope my experience in this was enlightening. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, these are, once again, all of this is just based on my experience. Your experience with a lot of these bags could be very different, um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please comment below if you agree, comment if you disagree. I would like to know your experiences as well. Um, if, you like, if you love any of these bags, I'm not saying don't purchase them. I'm just saying that perhaps to consider the pre-love market to try to find something in good condition um, before you take the plunge and spend full retail. That's it. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, comment below if you have any suggestions of what else you would like to see and I will see you in my next one. Bye!